about this. Romans chapter number 5 tonight. I'm looking about the deity, the virgin birth and the deity of Jesus Christ. But I'm looking at it from a different point of view. I could just give you the scriptures and I will at the end. Oh, let's take up the change real quick, Bonnie. All right, Revelation, I mean Romans chapter number 5. Romans chapter number 5, the virgin birth and the diet of Jesus Christ. I'm going to I'm looking at the why it's the importance of it. And then I'm going to give you the scriptures. Romans 5 verse 6. For when we were yet without strength in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man one will die. Yet preadventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commandeth, commendeth, I'm sorry, commendeth is different than commandeth. Commendeth means he showed forth, he broadcast forth his love. He God, but God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. But more then, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son. Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. Not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed where there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned at the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift, for the judgment was by one to condemnation. But the free gifts, a free gift, I mean, is of many offenses unto justification. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience were many, uh, disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where grace, I mean, where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. I know that was kind of long, but I've got a reason for that tonight. Father, I pray for your help and uh, God just direction with this, the way that you've taken me, Lord. Uh, Lord, I pray that you would touch my mouth, Lord, these lips of clay. As uh, uh, Brother Oliver Green used to say, God, speak through these lips of clay. God, touch my mouth, my mind, that it would preach forth, Lord, what you'd have me to preach. And bring forth, Lord, what you've showed me. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, we're looking for, or we're talking about the virgin birth. And the deity of Jesus Christ. And I've got the scriptures here. Some of the scriptures where we talk about. The virgin birth and the deity of Jesus Christ. But God led me a little bit different direction with this. I want to kind of cover why it's so important. Why is the virgin birth? Why is the deity of Jesus Christ make such a difference? Why is it? 
that we can't just accept that Jesus is a created being. Why we can? Why can't we just accept that Jesus had? Uh, Jesus was created for the death of uh, of uh, of. For the death on Calvary's cross. There's a reason why that we cannot accept that. And it has to do. The virgin birth has a lot to play on that. Now Mary is just a vessel that God used. Now I don't mean to be mean or downplay her. But I just want you to understand tonight. We, Mary is not the mother of God. She is the mother of the earthen vessel that God used, which was Jesus Christ the man. And so the virgin part plays in, in that. When we're reading this, I hope that you understood something. That every one of us in here tonight, men, women, boys, girls included tonight, we are all under the penalty of death. We are all given a death sentence. And so the importance of the Virgin birth and the deity of Jesus Christ is this. If Jesus was not born of a virgin, then he cannot be God in the flesh. And if he's not God in the flesh, then he's a man like you and I, and we're still in our sins. Because his death would be upon him just like it is on us. Sin would be upon him just like it is upon us. Because the Bible says... For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All man. That's why the blood that flowed through Jesus' veins was not the blood that flows through your and I's veins. His blood was not that of a man. His blood was that of God. Because if, he, if the virgin birth did not happen, if he was not born of a virgin, then he could not be God in the flesh. He's just a man like you and I, and we are still in our sins. And that's why I chose, I felt like God led me to this tonight. Four questions. Why must we believe this? Why must we believe in the virgin birth and the death, uh, the virgin birth and the diet of Jesus Christ? Because in verses number six and seven, we see, for when we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. That word Christ there means Messiah. It's a word for Messiah. And Messiah means God in the flesh. Emmanuel. The Messiah means it's God Himself. And so if it's not God Himself, then we, we can't say, for when we were yet without sin, I mean yet without strength, in due time Christ or God died for the ungodly. Because if He's not God, then He's a man like you and I, and that virgin birth and the dying to Jesus Christ means nothing. That's why it's important we set the foundation of the Word of God. What we're going to prove, uh, what we're going to believe about the Word of God. That's the foundation. And then the Bible says, no other foundation can, that, can be built upon than that which is built, which is Jesus. And so the foundation, Jesus is the Word. Word of God. He's the Lord, Word of God. And so that's our foundation. And then we're building on that now with the virgin birth and the diet of Jesus Christ. If He's not born of a virgin, that means Mary was a liar. That means Joseph was a liar. Uh, that means that all we believe is a lie. That means Jesus has an earthly father. And we are still in our sins. And that's why I say, when I say uh, these fundamentals, these five uh, pillars of fundamentalism, I'm willing to die on that hill. I'm willing to die for that, for that cause. Is because without the virgin birth, without Jesus Christ being God in the flesh, that means he's a man just like you and I, and we're still in our sins. The Bible says, he goes on here, verse 7, For, for scarcely for a righteous man one will, uh, will one die, yet preventure for a good man some would even dare to die. You don't say, we'd be willing to die. For somebody, I'm willing to die for my wife and kids. I'm willing to protect them and, pay, and, and, and die for them if that's what it takes. But me dying for them is not going to save them. Me dying for them is not going to get them into heaven. The fact that Jesus was God in the flesh, that He shed His blood without the shedding of blood, the Bible says there is no remission. And so if Jesus did not shed his blood for us, 
We are still in our sins. And if you're here tonight, you've never received Jesus Christ. You are still in your sins. Yeah. And you'll die in your sins. It don't matter rich, poor, black, white, man, woman, or confused. If you're not with it, Jesus Christ is not your personal Lord and Savior. You'll die in your sins. I don't care how poor you are, how prideful you are, how rich you are, how much you think you have. Without Jesus Christ being born of a virgin and without Him being God in the flesh, we're still in our sins. That, that's what this Unitarianism and some of this other garbage is teaching. That Jesus was a created being. If Jesus is a created being, that means He's created just like you and I. And that means He's a sinner according to that Bible. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The only way Jesus does not fall under that is if His Father is not an earthly Father. Everybody, the Bible says everybody from Adam to Moses, whether they sinned after the same similitude, when it's talking about that, He's talking about the same sin that Adam, Adam sinned, which was the direct disobedience of God. He said everyone that, that, that everyone that sinned, they didn't have to sin after the same similitude that Adam did, but if they were un, they're under that penalty of death from Adam to Moses until the law came in, they still faced death, they still died just like everybody else, just like us Gentiles. These people out here, they may reject God, they may reject, may reject the Word of God all they want to, but there's nothing, There's one thing they can't deny, they're going to die. The man said it last night at the, at the EMT class, didn't he? Even he reassured it, there's only two things short of in this world, we joke around about it, there's two things short in this world if you live long enough, death and taxes. Death and taxes. Now, not everybody, not unfortunate, unfortunately, not everybody lives to do pay taxes, but everybody that becomes life will die. Whether, unfortunately, some of them are killed in the womb, or whether you die in a car crash, or you die of old age, whatever it is, you are short of death, and that is Bible that you cannot get away from. Why must we believe in Him? Because we are facing death. Death, And the only thing that can save us from sin is somebody that's righteous enough to get us back in favor with God. Moses said, it's not me. Elijah said, it's not me. Isaiah said, it's not me. David said, it's not me. John the Baptist comes on the scene. They come to John the Baptist and say, John, are you him? John said, I'm not him. Jesus comes on the scene and John says, Jesus didn't say it. John says, Behold the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. Without Jesus' blood being the blood of God, flowing through His veins. If He's had the same blood that I've got, if He's got the blood of man flowing through His veins, then He's just as sinful as we are. That's why He could not have an earthly father. That's why God has to be His father. That's why He had to be born of a virgin. That's why it's important that He was born of a virgin. Because without that, the Bible says, with, uh, without here, he says, for when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. That's us. If Christ has a, a earthly father like you and I, he's just as ungodly as we are. And I'm not saying that to be mean or bring Jesus down. I'm telling you, without the virgin birth and without the deity of Jesus Christ, which is, that deity means that He is God in the flesh. That's what His deity is. Now listen. Look back at look at my, look at back that the man wants to try to corrupt what God says. Man wants to try to bring God down to his level, but in the wrong way. God came down to our level. God came down with dwelt among us, but who, he who knew no sin became sin for us, all those kinds of things. But look at the old uh, Greek gods, Roman gods, whichever one it was, I don't remember right now. Look at the look at Hercules. Now I'm not I'm not trying to make Jesus into that, but I'm telling you, look 
they understood more than what we realize. They created a bunch of different gods. But is it an ironic that the one that was supposed to save them from the gods was the one that was half God, half man? Hercules. Now Jesus was not half God, half man. Jesus was 100% God and 100% man. He didn't lay down his deity when he became man. He allowed himself to suffer, to feel pain, pain just like you and I. He allowed himself to feel thirst, to need rest, to, uh, to hunger. He even had to pay taxes. Next time you write that check to pay taxes or you get your check and you see tax, you'll find out something. You'll find out. Tell them, brother. You'll find out soon. You see that taxes? Just know Jesus paid taxes too. Peter came to it. He pinned out saying, does, does your master, I don't remember how it all goes, but your master paid taxes. Jesus knew as soon as Peter comes back and he tells Peter, he said, you go out into the flag and you cast a hook out there. He didn't tell him to put nobody on He said, you cast a hook, you pull up the fish. And they'll get gold piece and you go pay our taxes. Jesus paid taxes. Man never made no money. As far as we know, pay taxes. Hey, he knows what it's not. Now he's not. He's not like you and I. He's not. He's not sinful. But he does know what it's like. And so that's why we must believe in the virgin birth. Because without it, we were, we're ungodly and we just die in our sins. Number two, why do we need this? Because we are sinners. In verses number 8 through 10, but God commendeth. God sent forth. God showed forth. That's what that commendeth. That ETH, by the way, if you don't know. That ETH, this is something that's not in our modern language. That ETH, it's a continual thing. The Bible says that Jesus ever liveth to make intercession. That ETH, that means it's a continual thing. He loveth. It's a continual thing. You know, it's that, that when God puts that on there, it's not like our mom. We stood on a marriage altar 17 years ago and we told each other we loved her. But after 17 years of marriage, I don't love her anymore. That's that's why. That King James Bible, no thing sets it apart. He says, He ever liveth. He loveth. He commendeth. That's a continual thing that He continually shows forth His love to us. He continues to send forth His love to you that you don't have to die in your sin. You don't have to die and go to hell. He commended His love toward us that while we were, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Why do we need that? Because we are sinners. If he's not born of a virgin, if he's not God in the flesh, then we're still sinners and we're still trapped in our soul. One of the verses I looked up that I don't think I, I, pretty, I did not use in this says in, uh, I think it may be 1 Corinthians 15 now. I can't remember in Hebrews. I can't remember what's that. Anyway, it says, if, if, our hope, if, if our hope's only in this life, we're of all men most miserable. If this is it, if this is it, if, this, if, if you truly believe this is it, there's nothing after this, then go live it up. Go do whatever you want to do. There's no reason to be in church. There's no reason to be here tonight. If you truly believe this is it, there's no heaven, there's no hell, there's no God, then go live it up. Live how you want to. Do what you want to. But if your conscience is telling you there's a God, and you know that there's a right and wrong, see, because without God, there is no right and wrong. There can be no absolute truth. People say, well, yeah, we can, we can as a society decide who's, who's to decide what's right and wrong. Without God, we're just a bunch of molecules that randomly happened by chance, came together by random chance. We're, we're nothing. If without God, there's no right and wrong, those, there's no ethical or moral or anything like that, without God and absolute truth, we're just a bunch of random molecules you might as well just go do what you want to. But if your conscience bears witness, like the Bible says, and you understand that there's a God, and you understand there's a right and a wrong, then that means there's a judgment coming. That means you'll stand before God one day. And if you're not clothed in the righteousness of Jesus Christ, then you'll die 
in your sins be cast into hell and eventually cast into the lake of fire. That's why that virgin birth and the deity of Jesus Christ is so important. Because if He's just a man, we're still in our sins. If He's just a man, He died just like you and I. And the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 15 that if He just died and He didn't raise from the dead, then what's, what's all this for? That's why I believe that that foundation of the Word of God, that's why I believe in the virgin birth and the deity of Jesus Christ. Because without that, I'd still be lost to my sins. Why do we need this? Because we are sinners. Why do we have to believe this? Because it's the only way to heaven is through Jesus Christ our Lord. Number three, why are we dead men? This is also important. Why are we dead men? Verses number 11 says, uh, and not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Why are we dead men? Why are we dead men? Because of one man's sin. Adam sinned, and death passed upon us all. So if Jesus is just a man like you and I, if He does not have deity, if He was not born of a virgin, death has passed upon Him just like it passed upon us. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, so death passed upon all men. Jesus... If Jesus was just a man, then death was passed upon Him. And His death means nothing to us. That's why that virgin birth and the deity is so important. Hey, Mary, Mary couldn't save you. Mary could not save herself. Mary had to be saved just like you and I, believing in Jesus Christ. Mary was just a, a chosen vessel of God. This thing that others teach that God removed her, uh, her sin and she had no sin. They're not reading their Bible because the Bible plainly says that after Jesus was born, Mary went and gave sacrifice. Why did she have to do that if she didn't have sin? Oh yeah, I've challenged people on that. You know what? That, I didn't know that was in there. I know you don't know that's in there. A lot of people don't realize it's in there because they're not being taught the Word of God. Mary had to go give sacrifice after Jesus was born. Two turtle doves or two young pigeons. She had to give a sacrifice. She was sinless. She didn't need to sacrifice. We're dead men because of one man's sin. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned at their similitude of Adam's transgression, who was the figure of him that was to come. Even those, Enoch, Noah, all those people there at the flood did not have the, the law of God, but they still died in the flood because they sinned. Why? Why? Preacher, if they didn't have, if they didn't have the law, who told them? Mo, uh, Noah told them. Noah told them. The Bible says Noah was a preacher of righteousness. Nobody else got up. Noah got up and preached for 120 years. The judgment was coming. And they laughed at him. And they mocked him. And they made fun of him for 120 years. We think we got rough, you know, because it's so few of us in this little bitty town and, uh, and especially out here in Kansas because there's, it, it, churches are few and far between. Noah had eight people, him and seven others, preaching against the world. Nobody else got in there. Noah watched this. He, but from the time he began to preach, they say, from the time Noah began to preach till the time that he got on the ark, he lost his grandpa and his dad. From the time he started preaching, I think it's at least those two that were still with him when he started preaching till he got on the ark. 
lost 20% of his congregation. Did Noah back did Noah back down? Noah give up? Nope. Noah because you know what? Maybe if I went to some contemporary music, that bring them in. Nope. They didn't even know what that mess was. You know there had to be a, a, a vast difference between what Noah's preaching and what they whatever it was they had, but it wasn't enough for them to change what they believed. It wasn't enough for them to turn to God. For the Bible says it repented God that He made man because of His image and so corrupted Himself. What are we seeing right now? We're seeing a generation that's corrupting themselves. Every man's doing that which is right in his own eyes. That's why Jesus told them when Jesus was on this earth, He said it's going to be more tolerable for in the day of judgment for Sodom and Gomorrah than it will be for the towns there. Why? Because Sodom and Gomorrah didn't have the law put before them like we do. You think it, you think it, the, we think of uh, of what it was like in Noah's day and how wicked it was. Imagine what it's going to be like on the day of judgment for all of those that heard the Bible preached and walked out of church time after time after time lost. Hebrews chapter 10 of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who trodden him underfoot the Son of Man and, and, and counted the blood where, uh, wherewith of the covenant that he has sanctified an unholy thing. That's what the writer of Hebrews said. He said, how much sore punishment you think somebody's going to get who says that they're saved, but they reject the blood of Jesus Christ and they trod it underfoot. They know what the Bible says. They know what Jesus said. And they continue to trod it under their foot and say, I'm going to live how I want to, preacher. I don't care what you say. I'm saved. I can cuss. I'm saved. I can drink. I'm saved. I can smoke dope. I'm saved. I can sell my body. That's against what sound doctrine is. We're dead men. If Jesus was not born of a virgin, if He's not God in the flesh, He's a dead man just like you and I. That's why it's important for us to believe in that virgin birth and the deity of Jesus Christ. Why do we, why must we believe it? Because it's the only way to heaven. Why do we need this? Because we're sinners. Why are we dead men? Because one man sinned. And one man can make it all right. The man, Christ Jesus, God in the flesh. Last of all, number four, why are we facing judgment? Verse number 17, For if by one man's offense death reigned from by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Hey, you're facing judgment. If you're here tonight, you're lost. You are facing judgment. He that believeth is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. If you're facing judgment. What are you going to stay before God? Verse, verse 18, Therefore, as by, the, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. That's why it's important about that virgin birth and the diet of Jesus Christ. Because there's only one that can get us back in favor with God. And if it's not Jesus Christ, if He's not the Messiah, then all of us will die in vain and die in our sins without the Messiah. These Jews that people think, well, they're Jews by birth, they'll die in their sins if they don't reject Judaism. And receive the Lord Jesus Christ. Have you believed on God tonight? Do you believe on the virgin birth. And the deity of Jesus Christ. I'm going to go through these verses real quick. Go with me to Isaiah chapter 7 first. We're going to look at these. The virgin birth and the deity of Jesus Christ. Isaiah 7 14. Again this is why it's so important. This is why it's so important. 
the virgin birth and die to Jesus Christ. Isaiah 7, 14. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. So if you're writing these scriptures down, make sure you put Isaiah, 50, Isaiah 7, 14. That is under the virgin birth. Go over just to chapter 9. Isaiah chapter 9. This is his deity. Isaiah, Isaiah 9 verse 6. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. The Mighty God. Sure, thanks. Thanks for helping me out there. The Mighty God. He's God. These people that reject the deity of Jesus Christ and He's God in the flesh, they're rejecting what the Bible says. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon His shoulder, and His name shall be Wonderful. Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, of the increase of His government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon His kingdom to order it, to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. There's the deity of Jesus Christ. He's God in the flesh. Go with me to Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1. This is where it brings them together in these next couple ones. Isaiah, eight, Isaiah 1 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, do y'all see that? I want that understood. According to Jewish tradition, during the espousal period, they were husband and wife. They just not did the ceremony and not consummated the marriage at this point. This is important because when you're teaching about divorce, people like to use the verse, well, Jesus said uh, you, can, you can divorce somebody for fornication. The fornication was turned that in spousal period. When they had not consummated the marriage, when they had not taken their vows... If there was fornication, fornication is the relation of intimacy outside the bounds of marriage. Adultery, at least one of them, is already in the bounds of marriage. Do you understand the difference? So when you're reading this, make sure you understand it. Adultery, at least one of them, is in the bounds of marriage. Fornication, neither one of them is in the bounds of marriage. Now that goes away when you're talking about when Jesus is talking about uh, if a man looketh after a woman to lust after her, he committed adultery already with her in his heart. What he's saying is, is that if you're looking after her, it's basically like you've been married and now you're going to go on somewhere else and you're going to do it again. That's what he, he's getting at. But anyway, this is, he's already, so we see here she said she's not, she is before they came together. That means they had not been vowed. They had not consummated the marriage. But yet God recognized that Joseph was her husband. Being a just man and not willing to put make a uh, willing to make a public example. He like she had committed fornication. He was he was it within his right then. Was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary, thy wife. You see that? For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost, and she shall bring forth a son, thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin... We just read that. If you write in your Bible, Isaiah 14, beside of that, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son and shall call his name Emmanuel, which is being interpreted God with us. This one scripture right here in Matthew, these scriptures bring both of those together. 
ties together the virgin birth and the deity of Jesus Christ. Do you see that? This means yes in Kansas. This means no in Kansas. Yes. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord bidden him and took unto him his wife and knew her not till she brought forth her firstborn son and called his name Jesus. That ties together. Now go with me to Luke chapter 1. I want you to get as many verses as we can on this. Luke chapter 1 verses 30 through 35. She again tells us. Luke 1. 30 through 35. And the angel said unto her. Fear not Mary. For thou hast found favor with God. And behold thou shalt conceive in thy womb. And bring forth a son. And shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great. And shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. Now what verse did that just tie in? No. Isaiah 9, 6. That just tied together. Isaiah 9, 6 and 7. It does tie together the Matthew 2. But you see how he tied... God tied all this together. You go back to Isaiah 9, 6. What did he say? He said he's going to be these things. And he's going to give. God's going to what? Give him the throne of his father David. Luke ties that to the virgin birth. That's why you cannot separate that. It's important to have the virgin birth and the deity of Jesus Christ. The Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom, see that, there shall be no end. And then said Mary unto the angel, how shall this be, seeing I know not a man. What did that just tie together? She's a virgin. She's a virgin. It tied back to Isaiah 7, 14. The angel answered and said to her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the, of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Do you see how it tied the virgin birth and the deity together? That's important because you, God, He's God in the flesh, but He had to come of a virgin. Go with me now uh, to Philippians chapter 2. I'm going to give you a couple more verses now for his deity and then we'll be done. I've got three verses here, three or three spots here. and I'm going to just give them to you real quick. Philippians 2, y'all, some of these will be real familiar to you. Philippians 2, 6, so that you can see. Philippians 2, 6, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. So he's in the form of what? God. What's Isaiah 9, 9, 6 and 9, 7 tell us? That he is what? The, the what? The mighty God. Go with me to Colossians. Flip over one book. Colossians 1. Colossians 1, 15 says, Who is the image of the invisible God? So God became flesh so that we'd have something to look upon. Because we cannot look upon God the Father or we would die. die. Do you know Moses could not look. Moses just looked upon the glory. And the Bible says his face shone so much that the people made him put a veil on. Moses never looked on God. Flesh, our flesh because of our sin cannot look on God. That's why he had to be born of a virgin. He needed an earthen vessel to come here and die for us. Because if he came in his form, we die. We can't, the Bible says we cannot look upon God in the form of what we are in. People, uh, if God, the only way I believe is if God comes and stands before me. If God comes and stood before you, he'd kill you. Because we cannot look upon God. That's why he became flesh and flesh and dwelt among us. Because we cannot look upon God because of it would kill us. 
It says here, Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? For by Him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by Him and for Him. And He is before all things. And by Him all things consist. Now, that's important too. Because... Jehovah's Witnesses do not believe that Jesus was God. Mormons do not believe that He is God. They believe that He was created for the sole purpose to die for us. If that's so, then why does the Bible plainly say there that He is before all things? If He was only created to die for us, and He only came into existence 2,000 years ago, then how... Was he, how is it the Bible says he was in the form of God, thought not already to be equal with God, but made himself with no reputation, became a servant. How does the Bible say that by him all things were created? If he's not God, if he's not God, then why, why does the Bible plainly tell us that he is all things were created by him? He is before all things. He is from everlasting to everlasting. People get confused because, they, well, it says created or firstborn. His birth was already predestined in the mind of God before He ever breathed into Adam the breath of life. You can see that in Peter. Peter talks about he's a lamb, he's the lamb slain before the foundation of this world. The book of Revelation talks about it. He's the lamb of God slain. Hey, he is in the mind of God. Before he, though it was 4,000 years from when the world was created to when Christ died in the mind of God, it, it had already happened. Time means nothing to God. Do you understand? The day, that, that, where people get confused, that's why people try to take that. A day with the Lord's is a thousand years, and a thousand years is, is a day, and they try to adapt that to be able to justify evolution. That's not what that means. What that means is time means nothing to God. In my in God's mind, in God's reality, as far as it, it's only been two years, uh, two days since God walked out of this earth. That's what the way God can look at it. It's been two thousand years, but in the mind of God, it's but it it can be just as because time means nothing. God's always existed. Time did not come into existence until He created this world. Until God created time. How, how, how long has God existed? God is an eternal being. It's easier for me to believe that than when he just came about by random chance and this just miraculously came about. This good looking guy just miraculously happened to come together. And here I am tonight with some good looking, uh, uh, good looking kids, a good looking wife. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I mean, uh, that's what that world wants you to believe. I can't believe that. But I'll show you one more verse. This is important because I didn't point this out. First John chapter 7. This verse right here in particular lays it out as, pure, as clean as you're going to find it. As easy as you're going to have to know it. First John 5, 7. Modern Bibles. May, some of them may put this verse in, but a lot of them take it out. Some of them will have it in the notes. And some of them have a note beside of this saying this is not in the most, the oldest manuscripts. Oldest does not mean best. Joe Biden's older than Donald Trump. That doesn't mean he made a better president than, Donald, than President Trump. If you don't like that, I'm sorry. No, not really. 1 John 5, 7. This is why we use, one of the reasons we use King James Bible. They attack this verse. There are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. They attack that verse. Where do we see that word used in, in, in the Bible? That word? Word with a capital W. What? Referring to Jesus, but I don't remember where it was at. Yes, John, chapter one. John chapter number 1. Very important verses. John chapter 1, verse number 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Capital W. And John reaffirms that in John chapter 1, verse number 5. Uh, John chapter, 
1 John 5, 7. I'm getting that saved. That's why he's perfect. If he's not God in the flesh, we're still in our sins. That's why that virgin birth is important. That's why the deity is important. Don't let nobody ever try to tell you it's, well, it's not important. It's only important. All you've got to do is just believe that Jesus died for you. Now, you must understand that he lived according, the Bible says that you, the gospel is to believe that he lived and died according to the scriptures. And what do the scriptures tell us? That he's born of a virgin and that he's God in the flesh. If you do not believe that, you're not saved tonight. If you do not believe that, you're not saved tonight. You ain't got to know a lot of stuff to be saved, but you've got to believe that he is and that he is a warder of them that diligently seek them. How do you diligently seek him? You're seeking after God. That's who he is. Do you understand now the importance of the virgin birth? And the deity of Jesus Christ. Without that, we're still in our sins. Without that, Jesus is just like you and I. And I'm not trying to bring you down there. I'm just trying to get you to understand the importance of the virgin birth and the deity. He has to be God in the flesh. That's why when we take communion, that's why when we take communion, we don't use alcoholic drink. That's why we don't use alcoholic wine. Because alcohol is, is a fermented, corrupted wine. Grape juice. When, you, when you're trying to represent Jesus, you're trying to, as Peter said, as a lamb without spot or blemish, you should want blood or the grape juice as pure as you can get. You should try to get what, which you know we don't much have what's available now, uh, fresh grape juice, without impurities, without preservatives. Brother Shepherd has found a place, and if I get a chance, the next time that we do do communion, I'm going to try to get it. There's a place in Salina, Brother Shepherd told me about, that sells pure grape juice without any preservatives. It's as fresh as you're going to get without preservatives. Because when we're taking that body, or we're taking that bread and that uh, grape juice, it's to represent the pure Lamb of God. And when, you, when people do it with alcohol, it's a corrupted thing. That's what these people don't understand. The book of Proverbs talks about it. It says, look not upon the wine when it stirreth itself or right in the cup. When Solomon, 3,000 years ago or how many years ago Solomon lived, God inspired him to know that alcoholic drink is alive. How did he know that 3,000 years ago without a microscope? God told him. He says, you're not even to look upon it. Not to look upon it when it becomes corrupted. And yet people use it for communion. And like, that's okay. And people are like, why do y'all use fresh grape juice? Because we're trying to show the pure blood of Jesus Christ. That's the whole point of it. You see how it all ties together? The virgin birth, the blood of Jesus Christ. Without those things, we're still lost in sin. If you're here tonight, you never see Him as your Lord and Savior. I'm telling you what, you ought to come to this altar and ask Jesus Christ to become your Lord and Savior because He's coming soon. Let's all stand. The virgin birth. And the diet of Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you, Lord, for your coming, becoming flesh and dwelling among us, God. I thank you, Lord, that you didn't just live, God, but you died, as 1 Corinthians tells us, God, and rose again to defeat the death and hell, Lord, and the devil once and for all. God, I'm thankful that I, I am, Lord, newness of life 22 years ago. Lord, that you saved my soul from hell. God, thank you for that precious blood of Jesus Christ. Lord, a, a lamb without spot or blemish. God, help us, Lord. There's one here tonight lost. May they come to that saving knowledge, repent of their sins, and believe in God in the flesh. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.